everyone and welcome to episode 23. Uh, today my mom is going to be sharing about how you as a mother, even if your kids are in school or if you're homeschooling, how you can fit in some educational moments throughout your day and into your schedule without having to be um, to make too many changes to your daily schedule. So we're just going to go through, mom's going to share a whole bunch of things that worked for our family and hopefully it'll be helpful for you. All right, um, now uh, I don't know how many of you are homeschooling or desiring to do that or how many of you are uh, shuttling your kids to school and, and sports and things like that, but I'm just going to share some things that make it easy to fit in educational moments with your children because every mom is a teacher. Uh, some of the things that we did that were so simple to do, um, one is that when we were starting off and our children were young, our first three were young, and when we got off the interstate, there was a, about a five minute drive to get home, so we would start counting in unison. One, two, three, and so they would all start counting with us after a while, and they were real excited. They were pretty young, but they could count to a hundred. So that was fun introduction to um, counting and uh, and it was very easy to do that. And then when our um, when they were, I was wanting them to know the value of money. We went to the grocery store one uh, time when it wasn't busy, and I gave them each a penny. And I said, "See what you can buy with a penny." So they walked around the store with their little penny and they were trying to figure out what they could buy. And I think one of them ended up buying a grape. <laughs> and so there were just the tiniest little things, but they realized pennies were nice, but they were not very beneficial when you're going shopping. So the next week I gave them each a nickel and I said, see what you can buy with a nickel. And so they had fun kind of scouting out and staying with me and following our, uh, shopping rules but trying to find what they could buy with five cents the next week they got a dime and so that was fun for them and then it was a quarter and then 50 cents so they were learning the value of the coins without having to just check things off in a workbook so that's a fun thing to do later when they were starting the semesters and we were homeschooling i um gave them a list of, of their supplies that I wanted them to have on hand and I gave them a, a budget. I gave them each a certain amount of money and I said, you, you, I'm going to take you to the store and you can buy your supplies and you can kind of compare prices and, uh, and get your supplies if you have money left over. After you've gotten all the supplies, you may keep that. So they were very motiv to, motivated to do comparison shopping. And so they were looking and, and all, and, and I think in the long run too, they learned that although they might have gotten something cheaper, if, it, if the crayons broke easier or the pencils and all, uh, they realized that not everything that's cheap is a good deal. So that was another thing that we did uh, with money. Also, just while we were going about our business, sometimes in the car, Sometimes while we were washing dishes and we would start counting by, skip counting by two, four, six, eight. And then we got to where we could do all the threes. And then we got to the fours. And you know, that was good preparation for multiplication. This was before they needed to learn the multiplication facts, but it did make it easier to do when that time came. Um, we, were, we would practice our penmanship and uh, they would write simple letters, sometimes to friends that had moved away and sometimes to relatives. And you can even do this for missionaries. And so that's a good project for them. We would have one day a week that we would write a letter and they would work hard at trying to spell the things right and make it attractive. So that's something that fits in easily and I think we've kind of touched on this in the past, but make life a field trip. When you're going to a new business or some uh, place of interest or a doctor's appointment, make it a field trip and 
uh, learn to ask questions that the children can hear the answers to. Um, they can learn something actually from real life and people serving, asking about the doctor, about um, how he does certain things. and So it's just good to make every situation. You don't have to plan a big field trip, just make life a field trip. And then um, my husband did gardening with the children and that was fun. He made a, found a style of a garden that was like a big square and the diagonals were uh, tunnels and he planted vines over there like pea pods and green beans and then he planted corn and some other uh, nice things and some flowers around it and that was a fun adventure for the children and it was such a nice introduction to where we get our food from and how it grows and how we have to take care of it. Another thing is you want your children to have good observation skills. One time I sent them all out with uh, egg cartons, empty egg cartons, and I said try to find tiny treasures that God made, things that God made, and bring, uh, put one in each of the little cups of the egg carton and bring them in. And we had a magnifier and they could bring it in and we would look at it in detail and just marvel at the design and the, how intricate everything was and just leaves and feathers and petals of flowers, uh, so many things out there that were fun for them to find and look at through the microscope. Also, um, practice the speaking skills. You can do that easily just at dinner time. Just say, what did you learn today that was fun for you or that you really enjoyed learning? And they can share that and, and start developing how to explain what they learned and, and uh, everyone would benefit from that. Another thing is um, you have uncles and aunts and grandparents and great grandparents and it would be um, helpful for the children to just have some history and their introduction to history could be their family history and they can ask their great grandparents or uncles and aunts and grandparents to tell them about it, what it was like when they were growing up and how things have changed since then and places where they had lived and uh, how what jobs they had done so that's, that's a good introduction to real life history that is personal to your family. And we'd enjoy, um, encourage you to do that. And I think it's nice for the older generation and the aunts and uncles to be able to share those things and pass on their wisdom and in their experiences. And of course, we've already touched on reading to your children at bedtime and biographies and allegories and classics and that's just another excellent way for young children to have a sense of history before they get into the more um, textbook style of learning uh, history and uh, the things that they've learned and uh, can all fit together on a timeline after you've read enough biographies. Then. Um, we're going to touch on other things. Um, we just wanted to st get you started. Now, this is not an exhaustive list. We wanted you just to see, hey, when we ride in the car, when we're sitting down at the dinner table, when we're going to the market and doing our regular things, you can take, take good opportunity there to tuck in some wisdom and some fun and some uh, stretching them uh, and their knowledge. Okay, so uh, stay tuned for part two um, of this uh, type of lesson, and uh, we'll see you next time. Thank you again for watching. So long. Bye.